Um, next feature would be that files manager. So this would be where that import, export, delete type feature would be at. So top one, if we are connected to operation center, um, it's gonna show us active. Um, we wanna make sure that we have these buttons down here on the bottom right hand side checked. The enable to sync with op center. And then what's our one below that one, Chris? Um, enable sync to op center and sync from. So we want that data to go back and forth between the displays so that we can get that coverage map in both places if we need it. Um, you still have that ability to import. You plug in a flash drive to our Gen 5 or Gen 4 display. Um, you're gonna get a box that pops up that says import, export, or install. Um, import, you can bring those flash drives in. So if you've got an ag service provider who's making your prescriptions, uh, plug that flash drive in and click import, or better yet, have them make an op center account and send them to that machine with JD Link. Um, next would be export, so we can send those files out to a flash drive, or if we had diagnostics data we needed to pull off, um, we could export that from here. Um, if we wanted to share those run pages like we talked about earlier, we'd go up top to custom select, hit next, all data, click next. And then this gives us the option to choose those different data types. So if we had a tractor and planner run page layout we wanted to use in my machine and put it into dad's, I could export those six run pages, plug that into the next machine and have those same exact run pages across the full fleet. Um, so back them up to a flash drive, same thing if you trade it in, um, you can take those run pages from machine to machine. Um, and it did allow me to import those into a Gen 5, but I haven't seen exactly how, say a run page from a four to a five looks yet. Go ahead and hit cancel, um, delete down at the bottom. Let's say we wanted to clean up those prescriptions from last year so you don't have as many to navigate through on the display. We'd click that custom select, all data, and then next. And then choose those prescriptions and hit delete. And that's gonna clear all prescriptions off that display. Go ahead and hit your cancel. Um, next major feature under systems would be that software manager. So under here we would have our uh, installations and updates. So with any display that's connected to any Gen 4 or 5 connected to JD Link, um, we can check online for software updates. So as of two weeks ago, um, the software that came, for, came with a Gen 5 is outdated. So 23-3 is the current software. So if we wanted to update that, we'd click check updates online, uh, view for this display and click next. And then it's gonna go through its feature or function here to find what software is available. Additionally, if you have any implements or receivers connected, you can click view from other devices um, and that will pull any updates that are available for those uh, connected ISO implements. Um, next one on our Gen 4s would be activations. Gen 5 would be licenses. Um, let's say you got to the field um, and your turn automation isn't working. Maybe your subscription or license expired. Um, we'd tell you to go to activations and details to get us that serial number and challenge code so that we could get that uh, activation back to you. Next two here on the left-hand side would be that version information. It's gonna show us um, what apps or what software is on that machine when it was last updated. Um, so that's more information, more say for our side and the service side. Um, if you're having issues with planners and display compatibility, um, more than likely we're gonna nav navigate you guys to these buttons to make sure that everything's updated to the current software. Um, Gen 4 operating software is on 23-2 outdated as of two weeks ago, so. Um, next, if we're moving back up, would be the application side of things, so our GS2 or GS3 functions. Uh, first main one there would be our auto track guidance. Um, same auto track pie that we've always seen. First piece of the pie means we've got a machine that's capable of auto tracking. Your display's got an auto track uh, activation or license. Second piece uh, means conditions are met. You have a guidance line. Third piece means we've got that on off toggled to on. Fourth piece means you've hit that resume switch in that machine and you're able to auto track. 
Um, right hand side, if we click that set track button, that's gonna get us to our guidance lines. Um, if we do have auto path, that's gonna be the first in your default guidance. If you need to get to make another guidance line, we click on new track at the bottom left. And we still have a lot of the same track method methods that we've always seen. So we've got A plus B, A plus heading, A auto B, and then your lat longitude type methods. Curve track, same two there. We have our AB curves and our adaptive curves. Um, circle tracks came in base price on these uh, Gen 4s and 5s, whereas our 2600s and 2630s, um, that was Pivot Pro and an additional license. And then um, new with our Gen 4s and 5s is the ability to do a boundary track. So it's gonna build a guidance line um, based off of your boundary. So make sure you've got that ac accurate boundary. You wanted a guidance line 40 foot straight off that boundary. Um, you could use that to basically snap a guidance line around it. Chris is gonna make us an A plus heading um, just so we have a guidance line here to use. Um, we're gonna do a north-south guidance line for year 24, click OK. Set our A, choose your heading, click done. We've got our three pieces of the pie. Um, additionally, with our guidance on these Gen 4 displays, if we hit set track and click on that pencil icon for the guidance line, you can come in here and see the shifts for that guidance line if you do have any shifts. Um, but also you can duplicate that line. So if we're going from radio-based RTK to SFRTK, as these guys have probably talked, um, they don't use the same reference points. So we may need to shift that line and get it recentered up. So, um, or if you're doing say strip till and want your placement off center, um, we can shift that line, but not actually have it show any shifts. So we come in here, choose our number of shifts, um, and then click OK, and it's gonna regenerate that line that's already shifted. Now Chris clicks into that SFRTK line, it shows zero shifts because it's actually moved that guidance line over the total number of inches. Anything else on the guidance side, Chris? So um, we kind of went through fields and boundaries, but fields and boundaries would be where you go to make a boundary associated with that field. Um, we have the option for exterior or interior. Um, if we wanted to make a new boundary for that field and we were gonna drive it, we'd click create boundary down at the bottom. Oh, that's boundary track, sorry. We'd click on the boundary itself. If there wasn't one there, it would say add new and then hit create new boundary. So we have two options from existing coverage. So if you do have a planted area, you can snap that boundary around it. Um, I believe you can make just one pass, say all the way around the, all around the field, um, choose which side you want the boundary, left or right, and then it's gonna snap that boundary off that driven area. Um, same kind of deal, if you were gonna drive it, we'd click okay. Um, Chris is gonna delete our boundary here quick to show you. So we hit create boundary, click driven standard, click okay. Um, you've got a couple options for how to record it. Um, GPS is gonna base it off of that GPS location, offset it left or right, depending upon which way you're going around the field. Um, click start recording, and then you would drive, as Chris is gonna to try to do here on the simulator. So it's gonna start building that uh, purple line for that boundary. Um, as we turn, it's, we're gonna see that that boundary opens up. So it's always a closed loop when you're recording that boundary. Um, once Chris gets to a flat spot here at the top, we could hit stop and then see if he gets it stopped anyways. Um, we'd hit pause. So if you were wanted to do snap a straight line from one point to another, You'd hit pause and then drive to that next stop, next spot. So say the other corner of the field and then go ahead and stop there. And then hit resume and it's gonna snap those points from one spot to the other. Um, 
once you get your boundary driven, click save. Um, and then you have a boundary available for use. Um, just like Dallin showed for the headland offsets, we can do that from the display too. Um, click on your exterior boundary, click on that pencil icon. And then you can do uh, two or three different options there, um, top and bottom offset, or you can do a constant or a driven depending upon what you're needing to uh, do for your boundary. So just as we saw on operation center, we've got that yellow dashed line to show that we have that boundary associate or that headland boundary associated with that field. Uh, click exit. Uh, anything else under there? Um, next up under applications would be that ISO bus VT. Um, that's gonna be where any of your implements or your receivers are gonna show up within this list. Um, so any third party implements, if you're running a Raven RCM, um, our rate controllers are gonna show up under ISO bus VT. Um, and down at the bottom, you'd click on that menu button to see any of those uh, ISO bus implements. <coughs> so we could click exit and go back to our applications. And so we looked at Starfire under there. If we scroll down um, and click on our Starfire receiver there, um, this would show you both, both of the receivers at the same time for uh, implement guidance and uh, auto path. Um, but probably more importantly would be that auto, that advanced TCM calibration at the bottom. Um, so if you're running a Gen 4 or 5 display with a 6,000 or 7,000 receiver, um, I'm gonna direct you to use that advanced TCM calibration. So um, what this is, basically it gives us an auto track line um, it's got reference points on that line that's automatically going to calibrate based off of. Um, so you need 50 meters, travel at I think three and a half mile an hour on that auto track line, make a turn, come back and auto track back and it's going to automatically calibrate those receivers, both the tractor and the implement if you're running um, that auto track side of things or the implement guidance. Yeah, as you're clapping. I mean, John Deere, I'll say, has had more or less this ability to do this for 20 some years. We've been able to do TCM calibrations. We've been able to auto track for 20 years. Why did it just take the last three years to figure this out? I don't know. Um, so no more guests line up with the fence row, hop out, turn around, come back. Um, now you just auto track out and back on the line. It does it and you're done. Um, We've had the question, well, when do we need to do a TCM calibration? Uh, Deer recommends, say, each operation um, and any time that that receiver moves from machine to machine. So if we take that track or that receiver off a tractor and put it on a sprayer, it's gonna automatically say, hey, you need to do a TCM calibration. Um, integrated receivers come factory calibrated, so we do not or shouldn't hopefully have to worry about doing a TCM calibration on those. 